I would like to share the experience of Médecins Sans Frontières in the investigation of a large epidemic of dystonic reaction in Central Africa. <coughs> in December 2014, patients with suspected meningitis were reported by the Ituri Health District in the Northeast Democratic Republic of Congo that share a border with Uganda and South Sudan. A few weeks later, Médecins Sans Frontières was approached by the Ministry of Health to support investigation and response to the outbreak. Here is a picture of Nono, a village of 6,000 people in the rural area known as the epicenter of the outbreak. Cases were mainly observed from three health zones with a total population of half a million. This presentation describes the outbreak investigation. This experience was detective medical work, and I will try to present it to you as if you were there at each step of the investigation. List of patient demographic characteristic, clinical feature, and outcome were described. Cerebrospinal fluid was analyzed in and out of DRC for evidence of meningitis using Pastorex, Culture, PCR, and RT-PCR. Some other relevant laboratory tests were performed, which I will mention later. This investigation met the criteria of the MSF Ethics Review Board for exemption from ethics review. As the initial sus suspicion was meningitis, we use this as a case definition. As the outbreak, in, outbreak involved, we refine our case definition, which I will discuss later. Over eight months, there were 930 patient admission. 62% were children under 15 years old. Some of the clinical signs presented by a sample of the patient are described in this table. In February 2015, the clinical features suggested that the outbreak was probably not caused by meningitis. What were the special features not matching with meningitis? First of all, the patients were described as having few signs of meningitis, including fever. Some patients were described as having general convulsion without loss of consciousness. Some patients presented spasm of the neck or torticollis. Some were described with protrusion or retraction of the tongue, hypersalivation. There were some clustering of cases within, within households. Some relapse were also described. The age spectrum was from one month to over 70 years old. And the crisis lasted from a few minutes to several hours and responded well to diazepam. Most patients presented two or three episodes on the first day with recovery in two or three days. Very few patients with cerebrospinal fluid evidence for Nicera meningitis or other gem. And finally, there were very low mortality and absence of severe sickle. Some video of patients were reviewed by pediatric neurologists. I would like to sh show you a 20 second video of patient treated in MSF facility for which oral consent to record was obtained. Thank you. The pediatric neurologist suggested facial truncal dystonic reaction. This insight changed our strategy in inter of intervention from an outbreak of suspected meningitis to an outbreak of unknown origin resulting in acute dystonic reaction. As health workers had difficulty in correctly assessing meningal signs such as neck stiffness, the case definition of meningitis was certainly misused by confusing neck stiffness from meningitis with muscle spasm of the neck from extrapyramidal syndrome. As we started to suspect dystonic reaction, we improved the collection of data regarding this dystonic sign in order to refine the case definition. We also decided to collect some urine samples from patients presenting dystonic reaction and a history of all the medication given to the patient. We sent all of them abroad for screening analysis. 
Among 930 patients with dystonia or suspected meningitis, 11 deaths occurred in the MOH health facilities. Poor information is available on this patient and their cause of death. Did they die of meningitis, of severe malaria, or to an intoxication linked with the dystonic reaction? We just don't know. All other patients admitted survived with no severe sequela recorded. This, uh, there are a lot of detail in this graph. Uh, let me explain to you. It's basically an epidemic curve with the light blue representing the total number of patient admission for acute dystonic reaction from December 2014 till August 2015. You can see the MSF contribution in dark blue from end January 2015, the red arrow where we start, the number of admission of patients under five years old, and the number of relapses. Till the point of the yellow arrow, we thought the cause of the outbreak was meningitis, and then we started to suspect this tonic reaction, as already mentioned. The blue arrow is a very important step in the investigation and represents the detection of haloperidol in the first urine analyzed. In the nine urine samples taken from patients with dystonic reaction, haloperidol was detected in all samples. The finding of haloperidols in the urine makes sense and matches perfectly with the clinical description of the patient with dystonic reaction. At that stage of the investigation, we discovered, we discovered the cause of the dystonic reaction, but not yet the source. Where does alloperidol come from? Alloperidol is an antipsychotic drug used in the treatment of schizophrenia, mania, and delirium. Extrapyramidal side effects seen in the video, such as dystonia reaction, muscle spasm, rigidity, opistotonus, are among the most frequent adverse reactions in therapeutic use of haloperidol, which occur in about 30% of patients taking this drug. Some of these patients remembered having taken some drugs, but it was difficult to assess this very well. We knew some uh, took chloramphenicol, dexamethasone, diazepam, and paracetamol tablets. Now the green light, uh, the green arrow, represents the first detection of alloperidol in, tab in tablets sold as diazepam, which uh, Valium is one of the famous brands. Tox toxicological analysis of 39 medicine samples revealed the presence of alloperidol in all nine yellow tablets imprinted with the letter AGOG and sold labeled as diazepam. No diazepam or other toxic substance were detected in the nine AGOG tablets. And the other 30 medicine samples, so the not AGOG, didn't contain alloperidol, but all contained the appropriate active pharmaceutical ingredient according to their labeling. Note the decrease of the case admission from May. I will come back later to that point. We found the alloperidol AGOG in five different packagings. The picture